vertical projectile motion with two objects, A and B. We'll take a look at an exam question that involves stone A. Initially, we start speaking about stone A, you work out certain things relating to stone A, and then they say that they drop stone B. And often in exams, they do this. They ask about more than one object, two objects. It's never more than two objects, two objects. And they ask for things such as at a certain time, what is the distance between the objects? Or after how long, after we threw A, did we throw B? So we ask you to relate them or see how they compare depending on what the question's asking. So in this particular question, we'll get to it later, but we want to know, calculate the value of X, which is the time after stone A was thrown that we dropped stone B. So basically the time difference between when stone A was thrown and B was dropped. But let's start with the more basic questions. Um, and we'll jump into 3.4, which is a problem solving level four question later on. So stone A is thrown vertically upwards with a speed of 10 meters per second. They give me the initial velocity of stone A from the edge of a roof. And they tell me that the building or whatever is 40 meters high. Take the ground as reference. Right. First question. Define the term freefall. Now, freefall is one of our definitions that we need to know for this section. There's only two definitions that you need to know. Freefall is one of them. It's a very easy definition. Freefall is a motion during which the only force acting on an object is the gravitational force. You have to say only, and you have to mention that it's only the gravitational force. So with definitions, it's often good to remember them word for word. Then they say calculate the maximum height above the ground reached by stone A. Now, if we read the story about stone A, we throw stone A vertically upwards with an initial velocity, and then it's going to eventually reach some sort of a maximum height. Now, in vertical projectile motion, as soon as you read the words maximum height, we know that when an object reaches maximum height, its velocity will be zero, and that will always be the case. So what we know for this part of the motion, so what do we care about in this question? We care about when A goes from where it starts at the top of the building to its maximum height. So we care about this part of the motion. My initial velocity for that part of the motion is, they told me in the question, 10 meters per second. Now, this come, takes us to the point in the question where we have to choose a positive direction. I'm going to choose up as positive because it's the initial direction of my motion. You don't have to choose up as positive. You can choose down as positive. But whatever you choose in 3.2, you need to stick with for the rest of your questions under vertical projectile motion. You can't chop and change directions. So I'm going to choose up as positive. What that means is if I choose up as positive, my initial velocity is upwards. So my initial velocity is positive 10 meters per second. And as we just mentioned, we want to know the maximum height above the ground. So we are working with here, which is maximum height. And as I said, once it reaches maximum height, its velocity is zero. So that means its final velocity for this green part of the motion is zero. Then we know that because we're dealing with vertical projectile motion, that acceleration due to gravity is always and for will always and forever be when something is in free fall, acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, and acceleration due to gravity is always downwards. Now, remember, we chose up as our positive directions. Indicate that on your page. We chose up as positive, but acceleration due to gravity is always downwards. So if I chose up as positive, acceleration due to gravity must be negative. Now, please don't get confused. A is not always negative. Again, it depends on the direction that you choose as positive. If that confuses you, you might need to go watch my theory videos about this topic. So as I've mentioned in those theory videos, to calculate an unknown variable, we need three variables, which we now do have. And we're looking for a height. So we are looking for the fourth variable, which is delta y. Delta y because it's motion in the y direction, the vertical direction. That's what I'm looking for. Then we visit our equations and the one that we choose depends on the information that we are given and what we are looking for. So I'm going to choose this one because we have final velocity, we have initial velocity and we have acceleration. So you always write your blank formula down first like that from the formula sheet, then you substitute. So zero squared, 10 squared, 
2 multiplied by negative 9.8. You must sub it in as a negative because I chose up as positive and A is down. And we're looking for delta Y. Now, if you solve this correctly, so how you do it is 10 squared is 100. Take it over becomes negative 100. And then 2 multiplied by negative 9.8 is negative 19.6 delta y. So this is the coefficient of delta y. We say negative 100 divided by negative 19.6, and we get delta y as being 5,10204 meters. Now, you can round that off, although that's not our final answer. If you read the question carefully and correctly, it says, calculate the maximum height above the ground reached by stone A. So what we now calculated is the height that it reaches above the building. So it starts off at the top of the building. Okay, so it starts at the building and then it goes 5.1 meters above that. So here's the building. The building is 40 meters above the ground. Is it 40? Yes. The building is 40 meters above the ground. So we start on top of the building. From the top of the building, the stone goes 5.1 meters above that. So you have to add that 5.1 to the 40 to get the maximum height reached above the ground. So you say, therefore, in a separate line, you say 40 plus 5,10 and so on. And you get 45,10 meters. So this question is out of four marks. And if you did not read correctly and do these last, this last step, you would only get a mark for your formula and for your substitution. You would miss this method mark and then your final answer mark. So you need to read carefully. 3.2 asks us to write down the magnitude, which means the size, the amount, and direction of the acceleration of stone A at this maximum height. This is a little bit of theory, but as I taught you in the theory videos, when we have an object and it reaches maximum height, the velocity, the speed, at maximum height is zero. However, acceleration will always be acceleration due to gravity because the object is in free fall. The only force acting on the object is a gravitational force. So the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared downwards. So no matter whether the stone is going up, whether it's at maximum height or whether the stone is traveling down, at all points during that motion, the acceleration is the same. Please note that for acceleration, the unit is meters per second squared. It's a negative two over here. If you write it with a negative one, you are referring to a velocity. And as we said, the direction is always downwards. Now, 3.4 is my level four difficult question. It is when I involve my second object. So we already had stone A, which was traveling from the top of the building to a maximum height and coming back down. And then we are dropping stone B from rest from the edge of the same roof. And we drop that stone a certain amount of time. They say X seconds after we throw stone A upwards. So we throw stone A up and then after a certain amount of time, we drop B downwards. They say stone A passes stone B when both stones are 229,74 meters above the ground. They want us to calculate the value of X. So this is effectively what is happening to stone A. This is its path, how it follows the path. Stone B is dropped from the top of the building and it goes downwards like this. What the question is saying is at a certain height above the ground, and they actually give you that height above the ground, 29,74 meters above the ground. It is at that point that A and B pass each other. So they have the same displacement at that point above the ground. So the easiest way to approach this question, how I would approach it and how I recommend you approach it is for now, ignore the fact that we're looking for something called X. Ignore that. What I want you to work out is how long, because it is time that we're talking about. So think in terms of time. How long, what is the time that it takes for B to reach this position over here, 29.7 meters, 74 meters above the ground? How long does it take B to do that? The time it takes for B. And how long does it take for A to do that? The time that it takes for A. Once we have both time values, we will be able to work with those two time values to work out the difference between those times and how long after we threw A up did we drop B. But because we're looking for time, we need the time that it took for A to reach this position and B to reach this position because this is the magical position. This is the position where they cross each other. So let's first work out how long the time it took for B 
to reach 29.74 meters above the ground. So B starts here on the top of the building, which is 40 meters above the ground. We want to work out how long it takes for B to go from here to here. So how far did B move downwards? How far is this distance over here? Well, the total distance that B started above the ground is 40 meters. And we want to know how far it is to go from here to 29.74 meters above the ground, which is over here. So we say 40 minus 29,74. That means that B fell 10,26 meters. This needs to make sense before we can continue with the rest of the question. So I'm just going to repeat. B started 40 meters above the ground. We want to know how long it took for B to reach 29,74 meters above the ground. So this here is 29.74 meters above the ground. We started 40 meters above the ground, which means that B fell from this distance to this distance. So 40, which is the total distance, the big one. If this whole thing is 40 up here, this whole thing is 40. And we're going to minus 29 comma seven four that's how high b would be above the ground it gets us this distance which is the distance that b fell 10 comma two six meters my diagram is obviously not according to scale another important thing to realize is remember we chose up as positive we need to stick with that decision for the rest of our question we chose up as positive but which way did b fall b fell from here down to this position over here b fell downwards so if b fell downwards it means that its displacement b's displacement is negative 10 comma 26 meters so that's b's displacement b's initial velocity is zero because b was dropped b's acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared why negative again we chose up as positive earlier and acceleration is always down so we have three variables for b I need to find time, which is the fourth variable. Because I don't have final velocity, I actually can't use any of these formulas unless I first calculate final velocity, but that's quite long. I'm going to use this formula and you'll see in this case, it is actually a nice formula to use. I don't need to stress about using the quadratic formula. Reason being is because, take a look, my initial velocity is zero. So that makes this initial term turn to zero half acceleration is going down so it's negative 9.8 we chose up as positive delta t squared is what i'm looking for and displacement is negative 10.26 remember the reason why displacement is negative is because the ball is falling downwards when we work that out remember this becomes zero and then this over here is going to become negative 4.9 delta t squared you say negative 10.26 divided by negative 4.9 you get that, but remember, that is t squared. We need to square root both sides of the equation. And we get delta t is 1, 4470236 and so on. I'm not rounding this off because this is not my final answer. What I calculated here is the time that it took for b to reach the position mentioned in the question. I'm now going to do the same thing, but I'm going to work out the time for a to reach this position in the question. So remember, A started off on top of the building, reached a maximum height, and then returned to the ground. So we want to work out how long did it take for A to go from when we threw it. So from this, this is our initial over here. This is our initial position. To when it was 29,74 meters above the ground here. Remember, this is 29,74 meters above the ground. This over here is its final, A's final position. Now remember, if I want to work out how long it took to start here and to end here, I work with displacement. Now, we learned in grade 10 that displacement is a vector that points from where you start. So we start up here and it points to where you finish. This is the displacement. So this little piece over here is the displacement for A. And it's actually exactly the same as the displacement for B. Think about it. B also started on top of the building and ended up 29,74 meters above the building. So A's displacement is this distance here and B's displacement is the same distance over there. Now, again, how do you work out this little green arrow? You take the total height of the building, which is 40, 
that whole thing, minus this piece, which is 29,74, and we get this piece, which is the displacement of A. It, last time we did it, we got 10,26. It's the same thing. 10,26. And please, don't get confused. I know it is confusing to think of it this way, but A started on top of the building. So again, A's initial position was here. Initial, that's where A started. And this is where A ended in the question. So its displacement is also going downwards. You start here, you end here. From the displacement is an arrow from where you start to where you end. It's exactly the same as B's displacement. It's negative 10, 26 meters downwards. Why is it negative? Because we chose up as positive. So what do we know about A? We know that A's initial velocity is 10, positive 10. Think about it. Why am I saying the initial velocity is 10 because this is the initial position over here. And we know that when A was at its initial position, its velocity was 10 upwards. So positive 10 because we chose up as positive. Then when it reaches this part over here, what is, or when it reaches, sorry, this part over here, its final position, how far did it travel? What is its displacement? Negative 10.26 meters. Why negative? Because it went downwards. And acceleration is also negative 9.8. Again, it's negative because we chose up as positive. So again, we have three unknowns. We're looking for the fourth unknown, which is time. We can use exactly the same formula that we use for B. So this is for A. Same formula. But in this case, it's a little bit more difficult to use this formula because the initial velocity isn't zero. So you'll see what happens here. We got negative 9.8, delta y is negative 10.26, and we're looking for time. If you look at this formula, we've got delta t, that doesn't disappear, and delta t squared. So this is actually a quadratic equation. So if we get it in standard form, we can use the quadratic formula. So that is how I would get it into standard form. I would just work out the coefficient of the squared term, the coefficient of the t term, and then this is the constant. So remember, obviously, in your quadratic formula, this would be your value for a, this would be your value for b, and that would be your value for c. So use your quadratic formula. So there's your quadratic formula. You'll get two answers for x, the one being negative 0, 0,75. That's obviously not the correct answer because it's a negative. The other answer that you get is 2,79103 seconds. That's my correct answer. So what do we know? I know we've been doing a lot, but what we worked out is the time that it takes for A to get to that specific position and B to get, get to that specific position. So there's the two times that it took A and B to get to the same height above the ground. So to find the time difference between when A was thrown and B was dropped, that is what the question is asking. B is dropped from rest from the edge of the roof X seconds after A was thrown upwards. They want to know X. So how long after we threw up A did we drop B? How would we get that time difference? Well, you would simply take the two comma seven, nine, and so on, minus the one comma four, four, seven, and so on. And that difference in time is the time that we waited between, between throwing up A and dropping B. And we get one comma three, four seconds. It makes sense because we threw A up, B got there much quicker. So after A was traveling for one comma, or sorry, yeah, after A was traveling for one comma three, four seconds, then we threw B, B took 1,447 seconds. So if you add those two numbers together, it gets you the time that it took for A to reach the same position. These questions are challenging, but I really hope that that helped you get your thinking correct for how to approach these types of questions. I'll see you in another video. Bye, everyone.